districts in the state of Kentucky. In 2015 and 16, we ranked 138 with a 66.3 as a score, um, which makes us a proficient school. Um, the 60 the cutoff for being proficient is 66.2, which is the next level down and that's needs improvement. So we barely met the qualifications to be a proficient school. Um, secondly, obviously, is the student behavior that uh, we've been dealing with and seeing here recently at the uh, Old Kentucky Home Middle School. Um, and, and probably most importantly is the turnover uh, that we're experiencing in Nelson County School Systems. Uh, so in the last seven years, we have gone through now 37 principals uh, with the resignation of the Old Kentucky Home and uh, Nelson County principals. Uh, 37, that's either uh, resignations or terminations. That's 5.3 principals a year that we have gone through. Um, I've got two nephews that attend uh, Old Kentucky Home Middle School. They've gone through five teachers this year, just this year. So in my opinion, they've lost a whole year of education simply because of the transition from one teacher to the other. Um, I also think that that has a driving uh, factor on, on the behavior issues that we're seeing and the performance issues that we're seeing um, within our schools. Um, I, I, this is not a negative reflection on our teachers because we have some great teachers in our district. Um, I think it, it really has to do with culture and, and the lack thereof, uh, simply because we have a, a revolving door of uh, faculty and staff. So um, again, I, I ask that the board really consider uh, not extending Mr. Ward's contract uh, that expires in 2018. Thank you. Yesterday, I was um, pulled into the school and obviously seeing a police officer in front of my child's school, um, thinking I would probably get some kind of letter from the school letting me know what was going on. I did not. Um, I received that letter today um, talking about the teacher that was um, shoved, so to say, um, in the letter. Um, I would like to read the board a Facebook post that um, was just posted a few minutes ago from the teacher's daughter. Um, my mother has been a teacher in the public school systems for over 25 years. She works seven days a week, buys almost all of her own supplies, and deals with constant disrespectful kids. However, loves no however she loves knowing that she is helping the sh to shape the child's life. She taught me well as my brothers, and I vouch to say what an amazing teacher she really is. Yesterday, she was attacked by a student. Yes, attacked, not shoved, and not pushed, not literally tackled to the ground by the student. A letter has been released saying that she was shoved um, and will be okay. Let me make it clear. My mother ended up in an urgent care treatment center last night 
and was sore and bruised today and can barely walk around. This has taken a huge toll on our family, so excuse me if I feel like the situation is being taken a little too lightly. Needless to say, the letter I have posted below does not truly reflect the actual situation. Um, so I'm very concerned that when I uh, received this letter saying that this teacher was shoved and she's going to be okay, that's not truly the case according to her family. Um, I would also like to um, ask the board um, a few questions as far as um, the agency that will be supplying these officers to the school. There's been a little bit of conflict, um, conflicting stories with that. So I would like for the board to tell me who, what agency will be supplying these officers in our schools and if there is a definitive schedule for these officers. Um, also, it has been addressed that there have been many new staff members added to the school recently. I would like to know how many new staff members because there is conflicting stories with that also. Um, I have been told from various people that there have not been any new staff members located in the school. Um, my child um, is a Dean's List, uh, Dean's List student who comes home every day crying, begging me to not send her back to this school. Um, it's unfair to her. It's unfair to the kids that go there to learn every day. Um, as of right now, there's a, over a 30-person waiting list at Bargetown um, for these kids that are trying to get out of your school system. Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not believe that any of you on this board has a child in the OKH school system. So, um, with that being said, you know, how is it okay for my child to have to um, witness this day in and day out why none of your childs are even in the school system? Thank you. Angie Williams, I live over here on Caney Fork. I'm speaking here today on behalf of my child who is a student at Oak Cage. In no way is she being bullied, but she is a victim. A victim of not getting the proper education she deserves because of the daily disruptions in her classroom, cafeteria, and throughout the school. The current policy that's in effect is not working. These students need to be held accountable for their actions. Until that happens, nothing's going to change. Um, it's also a known fact that Dr. Orr was present in the school the day the chairs were thrown in the cafeteria. Instead of dealing with the problem, dropped your head and stared into your phone. Mm -hmm. Is that the reason you removed your son from our school? Was you worried about his safety? What about the safety of our children? What about the safety of your staff? And what I really don't understand is how you can let a teacher who has taught this district for over 21 years a teacher students actually had respect for Lee. Mm -hmm. Why you didn't do whatever it took to keep him here with all the plans and what are your plans to keep the other teachers from leaving? Or do you care? Well, I do care and believe it's time for a change. And I'm asking the board members to not renew your upcoming contract. Hello, uh, name's Larry Adams. Until yesterday, I was employed with the district. Had several issues work at Horizon Academy. I've been assaulted, been hit with chairs, spit on, cussed at. If I use the words that have been used in front of me, in front of you all, or in front of police officers, I'm sure there would be an issue. Okay. Uh, I've had meetings with Ms. Brown. I had to call the state police out here last week, and as a result, I was told I'd be let go. I took this issue, I went to Mr. Rouse uh, on several issues. This was being one issue, I was threatened by a child. I made a report to the state police because in the past we've gotten no result with the local authorities. I have tried to meet with you yesterday. I, I just walked right into his office because I couldn't meet with him any other way. I met with Ms. Brown about these issues and to no avail. This is not just isolated to OKH, it's in the district. Uh, two weeks ago, a phone was stolen from our school. I tracked it down, 
uh, there was a sheriff's deputy on the street where the phone was. I called my principal and told him, and I told him I was going to speak with it. He said he had to speak with Mr. Orr. Then he called back and said that I wasn't to speak with that officer, that they spoke with the adult, not the parent, and I was to go to that house, not ask any questions, just get the phone and return it back if I would. It's not going. I'm very capable of taking myself on a grown man, but the atmosphere that's been created by the upper echelon does not give us a safe environment to work in, nor teach these children. I've never seen any of one of you in that school that's only 60 feet away. Why? Are we not as important as the other schools where you visit? I've seen you maybe half a dozen times in our school. And I'm, my question is this, why are we not allowed to call the police? Why, when the school is vandalized and the kids abuse us, do you say we're not going to prosecute? I know uh, when the, somebody, a staff member, a few years ago had some material stolen from them, you forbade that person to prosecute. Why? I heard you, sir. Um, well, we won't argue about it because that's not what we're here for. We're here to make you accountable as we would ask our children to be accountable. That's right. And you're not. It's time. leave you with this the definition of a coward is somebody that has the ability to stop something but chooses not to out of fear of retaliation I've been fired and that's fine I'll be okay I'm a grown man maybe it's time for you to be one as well Hello, my name is Derek Hutchins. Uh, I know a lot of the communication here today has been about Old Kentucky Home, and uh, I guess over the, with the papers the last couple of weeks, I kind of felt compelled to be here today to kind of say a word because my wife and I kind of ran into the same issues with our oldest daughter at Old Kentucky Home about six years ago, and it seems like it's gotten worse over the last several years, and uh, and we, we really hate to see that, but it's just not about Old Kentucky Home. It's about when you look at the overall, you can look at all the numbers and the school rankings, not just Oak Dickey Home, but it, 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 you know, with Nelson County, Bloomfield Middle, Foster Heights, I mean, 622 of 709. You know, you've got uh, New Haven, 686 out of 709. I mean, it's, it's, at this point, it's about leadership and numbers. And uh, so I'm not just here for Oak Dickey Home. I think as a district as a whole, we need a change. We need, we need a change of leadership. And, uh, you know, some of the comments that were made in the paper by Mr. Orr, you know, about where it's our geographical location, uh, it's our pay. Uh, I don't know if he just maybe misquoted that or he's just that disconnected from the community because we're ranked third in the state from a growth standpoint. And if you want to know anything about the economical growth of this county, you can call Kim Houston and she'd be glad to give you numbers all day long on that. Um, the previous article stated, you know, with a, you know, kind of, to me, was pointing to blame at the principal of what was going on at Oak Kentucky Home. Well, she's inexperienced. You know, she doesn't have enough experience to handle those sort of situations. She doesn't have this, she doesn't have that. Well, that all goes back to leadership. You know, she was hired by you, and you're the one that has to lead her in that direction. If the environment was that bad from the get-go, then she shouldn't have been hired from the get-go. Should have been someone else that had that kind of experience in that type of school system before that. You know, we have two children that we sent to Bartstown. Thank God we were grandfathered in, because if not, we would have had to send to the council system. You know, and if you look at the Bartstown rankings, I mean, Bartstown's 52 out of 173. So what's the difference between what's going on in the city schools versus here? So today, I'm here to say we need a change in leadership, and it's up to you all to make that decision. Thanks. My name is John Peterson, and up until about a month ago, I was a substitute teacher in this school system. Over the last two and a half to three years, as I have been a sub, the conditions have gotten worse and worse and worse. 
when I was a teacher, I managed my discipline in my room. I very seldom had to ask for anybody to help me with discipline. And in one case, I didn't ask for his help. Mr. Orr came over and provided none. As a matter of fact, all he did was make the situation worse and made me a laughing stock among students as they talked about what had been done because I couldn't manage my discipline. Now, I ran the AIM room at Old Kentucky Home for one year. I was not the choice of the superintendent to run that room, but I was a choice of the administrator. I ran that room with discipline and results. As a matter of fact, at the end of the school year, teachers came up to me and said, do not quit. Please do not quit. We are getting more work out of those students than we have ever got. How did I do that? With discipline and I held them accountable. If they didn't do the work, then they got another day. And they came back, and if they didn't work that day, they got another day. And I called parents and told them exactly the situation that I was having. Mr. Orr's idea of discipline is to sweep it under the rug and make sure nobody gets me involved. Because if he does, then he's going to take their side. I have been threatened. I've been subbing at the vocational school. I've been threatened. One kid told me if I had a car, I'd run over your ASS. I had other kids throwing things against the chalkboard in the classes. And the only thing I can do is to send them to the office. That's a day at the spa. We need new leadership people. You need to wake up. Good evening. My name is Arthur Hendricks. Uh, I come to you tonight uh, as, a, as a concerned parent of kids and uh, mostly uh, the disappointment that I find in your leadership here at Nelson County. Uh, Dr. Orr and I know known each other for three years and I have seen absolutely no growth in this district. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a former professor at the collegiate level uh, so I think I've got a pretty good idea of, of how to conduct an educational classroom. Uh, I've watched Nelson County High School struggle over the last three years from exactly what they're talking about tonight is bullying. But it's not bullying from the classroom. It's bullying from your leaders within your Board of Education, from your directors, from your superintendent. It's absolutely appalling that that school has come so far, but yet it's got such a long travel to go. My wife resigned last week due to the fact that she could no longer tolerate the battles that she's been fighting, which you all are not aware of, which the faculty are not aware of. But it's absolutely disgusting that you continue to have a blind side to what's taking place in this great community. I'm just, I'm just thankful that we didn't uproot our family, move to Nelson County, establish roots, because to be honest, we should have known within three years we'd be removed because that's the track record with your superintendent. You will not get qualified candidates. That school went to distinguish the second year my wife was in, in position. She's had exemplary reviews, but she was pretty much forced to resign, which I know he doesn't fire principals anymore. He just kind of strong arms them. Or he uses, he uses his, his directors. And I cannot believe that you all cannot see this such a fine and great community. We, as industry leaders now, need highly educated individuals coming out of high school and trade schools. 
How are we going to get that? If they have such massive disciplinary problems, how am I, as a leader at a work, going to work with these students coming from vocational, coming from the classroom that are career and ready with certificates, when we can't, when we can't enforce the policies that, that the principals put down? How do you have a student assault an assistant principal and is arrested only to have the courts contacted to put her right back in the school? Because she You know, you can, you can put a whole bunch of sticks together, but eventually that bundle, it, it, it'll snap. And for us, I cannot take the chance of my wife working in a hostile situation knowing there's no support from the Board of Education. It can't happen. Mr. Orr needs to go. You all need a change of leadership. And if you can't see it, I hope the community will show you what it takes. That's right. Thank you. There were a couple of questions early on that I will answer. I'm not going to answer all of them, but uh, we've contacted Barstown Police Force to assist with the uh, off-duty officers. They set that schedule. That's not us, but we've asked for their assistance. Uh, the staff that's been added to the school is an additional uh, temporary staff member, and uh, we placed a teacher into a position that had been covered by a substitute. And uh, so those are the uh, staff additions that have been made. Uh, I've been in the building a lot, and I won't argue uh, every point because it doesn't do any of us any good. Uh, but I was not in the building on the day in reference, or at least at the time that was referenced. I, I've heard some of that story, but that's uh, different individuals. So appreciate the opportunity to answer those Thanks. So you're saying adding one teacher to the school is adding more staff members? It's one one teacher is going to make a difference. Still, you can just step up to the mic and state your name. Yeah. Okay. okay. And can I ask a question? So if, if you if you want to speak, you need to come to the podium. Can I come back up in, please? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Um, when you say that the Barstown Police um, know this, so has that been confirmed that the Barstown Police officers do know this? Yes. Because that's conflicting stories from what I've been told. Uh, from, I'm, I mean, I'm just asking the question. Spoke to your soap sources then. Uh, I, I will do that again tomorrow. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. I'm relatively new to the district. My kids moved here from Missouri. Um, we came here with a lot of high hopes. Oh, my name is Marie Miller, and I live at 110 Emory. And, you know, when we came here, it was like a new experience to any school. It was a little difficult fitting in all that good stuff. Um, and as the year, the two years have gone by, um, I've been really disappointed. Uh, my kids have been cussed at by teachers, or by a coach, and nothing was done. Um, or nothing that was brought back to me after I complained. Um, my sons come home with horrible stories. My sons are not perfect. By all means, I've got four kids in school, and if I don't get a phone call at least once a month, something is wrong. But when you, you accumulate all of this, and I have, <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm listening to, this child was assaulted. This child was assaulted outside this child had this happen this happened to a teacher this is a progression this is an escalation of violence how are we supposed to send our children to school with just we've talked to the police what about next year what's going to protect my child if someone decides to escalate even more these are issues that have to be addressed and there has to be a plan it can't be we contacted this person and we're talking to this person the violence is escalating go to any school and ask them, what do they do when the violence escalates? You de-escalate, and that's not happening here. 
We're watching it get worse. So next year when our children come to school, what is the plan? Where are we gonna stand on educating them to violence? Because we can say it starts at home, and it does. I tell my kids, don't go around whacking people. But you have my children for the majority of the day. And when I have to worry about their personal safety, that's a problem. Here's the plan. What is it going to be? What input do parents have in that? Law enforcement. Because I tell you what, if somebody assaults my child and you do nothing, you are responsible for any damage done to that child. money. Nobody wants them to get sued because that's money that comes out of our education. That's time, that's effort, that's energy. Have a plan. Be proactive. Come in next year and say we're going to educate our kids on bullying. We're going to educate our children on compassion and, and diversity. Come in and say we are going to take no crap from these children. Period. End of story. Because you're responsible for my child, for my four sons that go to this school. And if you can't do that, I don't know you from Peter. But if it can't be done, it has to be changed. Because you are protecting our children. It is not some side act. It is not anything else. That is the number one concern you guys have. It's not the budget. It's not technology. It's getting my kid in and out of school safely. Thank you. appreciate the concern that you've expressed uh, tonight, and not just tonight, but through the emails and the phone calls and the meetings that not just myself, but others in the district have had as well. Uh, I think uh, it's fair and reasonable to say what is the plan, and I've outlined short-term plans that we'll be implementing and have been implementing for closing out the school year. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned in the notice that went today is that we'll be working with the Kentucky Center for Safe Schools. They offer their services uh, to school districts and we're glad to work with them. They will be able to help and be able to work directly with the schools where we're struggling with those issues the most. So we wouldn't need them if you if, do your job. Me, I, That's right. Thank you, Mr. If you do your job or you need to step down. Well, that's uh, the, the beauty of having the Kentucky Center for Safe Schools come in is they'll work directly with the schools. So those of you that are concerned that uh, I'm a problem, then uh, we'll have those folks here and uh, they do good work as well. So. They can't do much right the main thing to go to. Hi. Um, sorry, one more person. I'm just going to say Christy Hedgem, 3133 Mobley Mill. And I, I love the idea of an outside source coming in as far as the safety plan. But you have to look at who you have now, who your teachers are, who your principals are, who are with our children eight hours a day. Um, like my husband mentioned earlier, um, we have an older daughter that's graduating this year and my other two children, uh, and she's gone to county um, since kindergarten. And my other two kids go to Bardstown who have an over influx of kids and that they can no longer take because they're leaving the county system. And I think you need to take a hard look at, as a board, at your teachers, and as the leaders that we have in each school right now, and are they willing to cooperate with Mr. Orr? Are they on Mr. Orr's plan? Are they on his same timeline? Do they think that bringing in this outside person is what needs to occur? Because it's my understanding that it's not cohesive. I don't feel that your staff members are on his side. I don't think that there's a congruent, there's not a team effort here. And if you don't have them on your side, you're not really going to get anywhere. bring anybody in, I bring in some standards of ethics. And that's what I have investigated. I think you've got bigger problems than discipline. Do we have any more speakers? Okay. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn then. Okay. So, yes. So, so I make a motion to adjourn um, our meeting. Um, Right here, second. Mm -hmm.
Second. Mr. Jackie, second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. This meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay.